and welcome to this week's episode of Taking Care of Business. You've got Mark Walters, our managing director, and myself this week. The boys, Carl and Lewis, had to um, attend a course at the last minute, so I think they'll be back with us all with us all next week. Uh, the time is 11:42 a.m. I'm sure by the amount of breaks and reshoots and everything else we need to do today, it'll probably be about 4:42 by the time we finish to get 15 minutes of. Um, Hopefully some entertainment and information to and you guys. And that's just me. Yeah. That's just down to me. Well, I didn't want to call you out, but yeah. <laughs> Mr. Perfection. Um, okay, so to kick things off, to get straight dive uh, straight into it, there's been new uh, changes with the way people can list properties as of the 1st of October. Do you want to give a quick rundown for us on it? Yeah, well, we found out, Paul, about, it must have been about seven or eight weeks ago now, um, that the land department were um, bringing in a new initiative that you can only list your property with three brokers. Yep. Now, if I'm being honest, it was kind of music to our ears. I think sometimes to our detriment, we can actually be a little bit too, um, probably a little bit too strict with our, with our agents. Um, so when we found out about this, obviously we wanted to find out a little bit more. We spoke to our partners at Property Finder and Bear Youth and all the other um, portals. And whilst they had heard of it, obviously there was no implementation yet. So we delve a little bit deeper into, into what it was. And as of the 1st of October, like I said, you can only now list with um, three brokers, yeah. which is again, fantastic. So the procedure, which we were led to believe would happen on the 1st of October, would be you have to now do a um, what you call a unified form A through the Dubai REST app, which goes straight to the seller. The seller will then accept. If he accepts, you've become one of the uh, three agents. If you are the fourth agent, then unfortunately you can't list your property on the portals. It doesn't mean to say that you can't have it online, but or you can't, sorry, market it, but it will not be on the portals. Um, we're at the fourth today, and there hasn't been any significant change. I've just looked at uh, the portals this morning, and we've still got, I think, 93,000 units online on, on um, Property Finder, 74,000 on Bayou's. So again, I think we're gonna see the benefits of this over probably the course of the next four to eight weeks. But for me, Paul, I think it's if it, if it works, and if it's regulated properly, it's going to be massive for the market. Yeah, and which, to be, to be fair, I do think it will be regulated properly because it's something that the land department have talked about for a while. So, I know Mark mentioned there about uh, a unified Form A through the REST app. As a homeowner, you don't need to worry too much about all of that. Our agents are trained, they know how to use the REST app. What will happen is you will get a text message. Uh, on the text message will be a Form A. Check it through, check the details, make sure you're happy with everything, and just click accept. And that, that's the extent of of what you have to do. But in general, yeah, I think it's a great move. There's only three three properties on the market, or your property can only be on the market with a maximum of three agencies. For us, it's superb. I mean, I, for everyone listening as well, if they've ever been involved in looking for a property to purchase or to rent in Dubai, they must have had the familiar nightmare of just reams and reams and reams of seemingly available properties. Well, it's the biggest gripe of any consumer. Any consumer who goes online and calls an agent and gets through to the agent and the property is is not available. Like I said, years ago, that might have been the norm, but now a lot of buyers and consumers are getting wise to this now. So for, for the buyer, it's, again, it's a fantastic move because they're not speaking to an agent that's not putting what we call fake listings on. But from a seller's point of view, again, I think the important thing for me is one voice. Because there's so much competition in Dubai at the minute with, with agents and, and, and agencies alike, it's very difficult to have that one voice whereby obviously a seller will always want to sell a property at the quickest amount of time, but sell it for the most amount of money. Now, when there's too many people or there's too many people in the kitchen as, as such, things can be misconstrued and things can be, um, or information can be mislaid. So if there's one voice and you're speaking to one or three agencies in this case, then you've got a, a better chance of hopefully selling your property in, in, in a quick amount of time, you know? Yeah, 100%. So one of the things we're, we're saying as a company um, on the back of this is three agents is great, but what we've advocated for a while and we, we're kind of pushing the message again, one agency is even better than, than three. And what Mark said there, one clear voice to the market, one clear pricing strategy, 
a buyer or tenant's not going to hear multiple bits of information and multiple different, potentially multiple different prices from different agencies trying to compete to, to get a deal done. You, you're really controlling your exposure to the market, as well as the other advantages of less supply equals more demand. What you'll also see as well, Paul, I think is buyers have a tendency to bid against themselves, if that makes any sense. And what I mean by that is, You'll have a buyer who might speak to four, five, six different agents who are listing the same property and they're outbidding themselves because obviously the seller who is might, might not be in real estate, they might be in financing or banking, whatever it might be, and they feel that there's more buyers than, than what there really is. So having that one voice, again, will only benefit a buyer as oh, well. Yeah. It's one of the most misconceived ideas that buyers have that I'll put an offer in through three different agents and see which one can negotiate the best price yeah. for me. Yeah. It's, it, it's so wild because like you say, all the sellers just sat there rubbing his hands thinking, oh, yeah. we've got three people making offers here. And all of a sudden that negotiation becomes so much harder. 100%. So again, if it's, which I think it will be like you said before, if it's regulated properly, and listen, don't forget, it's in Dubai, think there's a lead-in period. So it's not going to happen overnight. Um, I think with the help of all the agencies as well, I do think it's going to be a great move for the market, I really do. Yeah, 100%. Anything that brings transparency and more integrity to the market is a, is a good thing. Absolutely, and I can say for not just, it sounds like we're putting a spin on this, but not just for us, for the consumer who's buying the property. These guys are spending, you know, their life savings on, on a property. We see this sometimes as just a transaction. Buyers and sellers, they, you know, they've They've created a life and they've, they've, you know, they've brought the children up and, and whatnot. So there's more of a, it's so important that the, the transparency aspect is there. And I think with this, it will, uh, it will have a massive impact. Good. So then coming on to the market, which, which we've mentioned a couple of times, we've had our managers meeting this morning. So at the start of every month, we have a, a meeting with all our managers. We discuss the previous month and then the month ahead reflect on the month and then make plans and projections for, for moving forward. So what are the main what are the main takeaways we've got from that? Or what's the main, what, what's happening in the market at the moment? Well, I think first and foremost, Paul, you've got to look at the roads. I came to work this morning and I left my house at seven and I'm going to live around the corner and it took me 45 minutes to get to the office. And like you say, on a normal day, it might take me five minutes. So you're seeing the roads are significantly more busy. That's definitely a sales spin now, isn't it? Five to 45 minutes. But it was, honestly, yeah. it was. I, I, what I'd done was I should have, because usually I missed the turn. I missed the turn. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> usually I missed the turn and go past and, and come round, so it takes me five minutes. But yeah. today, I've come, and listen, I've, 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 uh, I've messed up. I, I know the point, yeah. I've messed, I've messed up, but it's not a spin, by the way. <laughs> but but you've seen the malls as well, Paul. You've seen the malls, yeah. you've seen, I was out on, on the weekend with, with friends, and the, the hotels, the occupancy levels must be through the roof. So we're seeing a lot more people come back. I will obviously over the, and I think we alluded to this in one of our podcasts, um, in July and August, it was the first time that people could really travel. So people will obviously spend a lot more time out the country. People spend a lot more time out the country and working as well remotely. But now you're seeing a lot more people come back. I think. There's a, a change in the weather as well, although it was a little bit um, humid this morning. We're definitely seeing the um, the climate drop as well, which makes a lot more people come to country as well. But as a internally, we've seen um, we had a fantastic September. We had a really good September. I think in terms of, of revenue, year on year, September 2021, we've seen a 17.4 percent increase in our um, company's turnover. We also seen a 27.6% increase in revenue for the first nine months versus uh, the first nine months last year. So it's been, let's like you say, September was, was, and it always is. I think the final final four months, obviously we've gone into the final quarter now, the final four months, I'm sure not just for, for our company, is see, it, it's it's a, it's probably the busiest time of the no, year. No, it is, and the, the land department data backs up what we're saying. So sometimes I think it's good to point out, we're not, we don't talk about our revenue as much as say, oh, look how good we are. It's, it's more because we know these stats and figures and it's a representation of, of how the, the wider market's going and, and what we do um, what we do see from the from the land department as well. How about the ultra like luxury high end of the market? Because that, that was a topic we covered this morning. It's I've, I've done a I've done a couple of a bit of research the last couple of days. There was I'm sure a lot of people saw in the market the most expensive um, apartment that sold, I think it was in August, 
There was actually a penthouse in the Royal Atlantis that sold for 163 million dirhams. Um, further down the line, there was a company who sold the most expensive villa in, I think it's the most expensive villa on record. It was 302 million dirhams on Gfront of, of Palm Jumeirah. Well, it's, I've never seen anything like this. Um, the amount of money that is coming into this place is, like you say, I've, I've never seen it. But I, I'll always argue, and people say about the pricing in Dubai, it's, you know, obviously we've seen an increase in price over the last, well, since um, post COVID, but Dubai is still so undervalued. It's so, yeah. so undervalued. You, let's say you look at, let's say you look at the 302 million dirham property. It was a double signature. So forgive me how, how, how big it would, it would be, but it's a large property. But let's say, let's take that in, I don't know, New York or LA or Hong Kong. The price per square, per square foot would be significantly higher than what it would here. So whilst we are seeing a massive influx in, in terms of, of, of wealth coming into Dubai, and that coincides with another stat that I've got here, it's actually 50% or 50% of our uh, sales in September were cash purchases as opposed to 50% with finance purchase, which you've never seen. It was actually exact 50% yeah. either side. So to put that into context, usually our finance purchases make up 65 yep. to 70% of the market. So it is showing, a, like you mentioned, a shift of wealth coming yep. to the country. And even on a localized level, we've got, I think it, it, uh, there was a press release last night, so we can talk about it a little bit. Um, an exclusive enclave of villas in Jamaica Gulf states selling between 25 and 45 million. Yep. And up until this morning, really, we've not been able to uh, talk about it to the market. We've had no marketing material whatsoever. And we've actually managed to, to sell three of the 18 villas just from word of mouth and, and like the high-end clients that we've had in the past, which again, isn't something that's always happened in the market. No, you're right. And I'm really excited about this development. Like you said, there's only 18 units available. Um, very similar for anyone who doesn't, um, did, you, did you mention Jamaica Gulf Estates? Yeah. So obviously it's in Jamaica Gulf Estates. It's very, very similar product to a hillside. I hope I'm okay in saying that. Um, but yeah, the guys who are pushing this in our Jamaica Gulf Estates team, very excited about this and like you say we've, we've already managed to um sell three on an expressive interest um there's more details to follow and um, which again the guys in, in in the team will will um allude to but yeah it's it, it looks a very very good product the guys behind the product are actually the developers of the 118 in downtown which is a high-end yeah. development in downtown and the Taj residence as well in JLT, which again, if anyone's seen it, it's a, it's it's a, a signature development really, isn't it? It stands yeah, out. It's very, it, it, it's, listen, it, you can see it on off Shakeside Road and it looks all the way down to, down the, um, the skyline. So yeah, an excellent brand and something that I'm very, very much looking forward to in the next few, uh, well, next in coming two years, I think is, I think the, the handover is the end of 2023 maybe, so 18 months time. Yeah. Before we uh, wrap up then, I want to talk about uh, the lettings market, our lettings team, how we performed and how we feel the, the market's going in general. Well, we actually recorded uh, a new record in September, which I'm always a little bit skeptical in saying, but sometimes it, we can be saying that we broke all these records, but it was September was, was our best ever um, lettings results. What we've actually done in the last couple of months since we, we opened Motor City, We've moved our apartment, well not moved, but kept our apartments team in, let, in lettings in Vision Tower. And our villa guys have stayed here. Um, so it's seen, again, it's, it's working well, working really, really well. So it was a record, which was nice to see. We actually seen the rental, in price, sorry, the rental price decrease from August by 7.6%, but there was an increase of 29% year on year, which is significant, I think. Our average um, rental price in September this year was 170,000 dirhams. So we've seen a significant increase. From yeah, and I'm going to make a sweep in generalisation, but you'd maybe expect a, a decrease from August. Again, it is always hard to look month by month, but I'd say August could be very much uh, families moving over to Dubai, getting settled in ahead of this kids' school year. So predominantly, maybe more villa rentals, which are a bit higher price, and then. Yeah. September, maybe the kids already started school, so it's maybe less of the, the villa transactions. Yeah, I totally agree. But I think all in all, yeah, what I what I do think we'll we'll see now from um, Q4 is 
I think I, I mentioned it at the start of, of the podcast, the number of people that are going to be coming into country. And um, we're already seeing that. I think, I don't even think we spoke about the World Cup or the golf, obviously the DP um, golf come into play. Then we've got the Formula One. So there's so many things that in the last minute. And so to interrupt to Houston, we've not spoken about, which will probably deserve a podcast on its own or, or certainly some um, social media attention from us is the new visa yeah. system that came in uh, to force from yesterday. So golden visas, visit visas, um, th there's a whole raft of changes that, that have come into force, which is only going to attract more people to Dubai and hopefully keep people in Dubai. <laughs> not in a bad way, I was going to say here for longer, but like not against the will, but hopefully people feel more settled and, and well, want since, to stay in Dubai for a longer period of time. Since after COVID, the, the initiative that the, that the governments have been bringing in has only it's only been good for the, for the city. I think we're at around about 3.6 million people in Dubai at the moment. For me, within the next 12 months, that's probably going to be touching 4 million, didn't we? 4 million people. But by the end of the year, like you say, well, what's going on? We are, I'm so excited about this place. Like you say, I'm, I'm an advocate for the place anyway, but I just feel by the end of the year, we're going to see a massive influx of people, which is only going to be bold well for, for us as well. Good. Let's wrap it up there. Thank you uh, once again, everyone, for listening in and watching. Our data team are running through all the stats at the moment from both the land department, also up and all stock data for the month of September. So next week, we will bring you a data episode, which will add probably a bit more meat on the bone to what Mark and myself are saying in terms of giving you data points as well to, to back up what the, the context and the, the content of what we're saying. So until then, have a good week. Thank you again. Don't forget to subscribe, press the like buttons, find us on all your usual channels. Any feedback, questions, or anything else are always welcome. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.